I'm joined by the phenomenal Chit Sandu, which is an, ama an amazing gang leader, drug leader, committed convict and drug dealer. He's served 11 years in prisons. He's served in the United States. He was ordered at gunpoint while he was a robber and now he looks after orphans as well. How you check then? So where did it all start then? Started getting right messy. It was uh ah. lived in Huddersfield, yeah. Lived in Huddersfield, born in Hertfordshire, moved to Huddersfield when I was four. And from then I wasn't that bright, I had a stutter, I had like uh disabilities, we had no money, this and that, so I was stealing and robbing from back then and uh, my dad was quite strict he never let me out he didn't let me do this didn't let me do that and when I got nicked a few times he went right okay I'm taking you away from this environment taking you to Newcastle they bought a shop up there we bought a shop in Newcastle Washington so that was where we lived and that's where we took a lot of abuse as well I took a lot of racial abuse there in the 80s uh, it was like really hard work because we were the only brown faces in the whole village. And we got a hard time every day, daily hard time, you know. And going to work was like a proper hardship. You know, it was a nightmare. Nightmare for me. We used to get spat on, get caught packies, this and that. We're going to burn you down. Uh, people used to come in fucking pissed, want to fight me old man. And uh, They used to steal vodka, grow men. I was only 15 year old kid at the time. They used to come to the till, and I said, uh, they used to have a bottle of vodka down the stride. And I used to say, what about the vodka, this and that? And I said, well, what about it, yeah? I'll come around the counter and jump all over your fucking blackhead, yeah? And I wasn't in a position to do anything then, so we just took this shit for years. Took this shit for a few years, until I was about 22. Uh, we were spot on regular, got loads of fucking shit, yeah? And then I decided to train, and then I decided to fight boxing, yeah? So I started to train, started to fight, and then and then I made my move upwards. I made my move upwards. I got involved in the dormant scene. I got a job there, and I knew that there was a scope there for uh, drugs, for steroids. This is back in uh, the early 90s, late 80s early 90s, stories then were like sort of quite like sort of new. And back then I thought, okay, you know, you know, I want to make my own money now. So I started going abroad, bringing back um, steroids from Spain, Greece, Turkey, nearby countries. You know, it was okay. It was okay. It was like doubling my money up on it. I won't make him, you know, like, it wasn't a lot, yeah? But, um... Enough, enough here to, um, get by. Doing okay. And then, uh, I got involved with a couple of cousins of mine, and I said, listen, let's go further afield and do this on a big fucking scale. Pakistan. Karachi, yeah? Nobody wants to move to Karachi. Nobody wants to do business with them. Taliban, the Al-Qaeda. Everybody just stays away from Pakistan. And we were Indian Sikh, so we pretended we were Pakistanis. And we gave ourselves party names. Jet Khan was my name. And we went across there. And then we made the first fucking move. You know, we made the first fucking move there. And it was good. It was good money. We made uh, 30 grand. 30 grand off one trip. Split three ways. 10 grand a piece. Back in the early 90s, it was okay. And then from then, we moved around. You know? So do you think all the violence that you did and you caused was because you had enough of what you have uh, your own environment of what you were fetched up on as a, as a child? The violence was just through uh, the shit that... And then I was thinking, my only way out of this, you know, is like sort of... Life of crime. Yeah, yeah, it's crime. Beating these people, you know? Beating these people will give me a fucking daily fucking heartache, you know? Give my mum shit, give my dad shit. And so that's when I started training. That's when I start a fight. That's when I start a box. And yeah, Charles Bronson effect. You know? There's only one that's escaped me. I ain't gonna name him now, yeah? 
So when did you actually go over to Spain then? Because you was quite known uh, as a really being gangster over in uh, Spain, weren't you? This was when um, I got banned as a doorman. I was working as a doorman in Newcastle, yeah? But they wouldn't give me a license under my name, so I was working under my cousin's name, yeah? It was a legal name, and incident happened, and I broke someone's leg, yeah? On a night, yeah? Taking them down the stairs, ankle twisted, leg broke. They said I did it on purpose this night. Anyway, I did a runner. It was all in the news, on the radio, this and that. So I handed myself in. And then I was uh, a doorman in, like, do not employ this doorman, yeah? Do not let him in your bar and don't let him in your, do not employ him. My face was over everywhere on uh, pub watch. So then I started working in Middlesbrough. I worked in Marvin, these bars down there with um, my second cousins who were working there. And then we got talking and then we thought, okay, let's just do this trip to Pakistan. So the three of us hooked it all up and we went to Pakistan. And then we did our first trip. And first time around, it was hard work, you know, what to do, who to contact. It was proper hard work, but it was done. And we made some good money out of it. And then you went to Alicante and our response um, surrounded the plane, didn't that? Well, that was after a few trips, yeah. We did... How many trips? I did about uh, about eight or nine trips, yeah. Mm. 60 grand on each trip. Um, you were grassed on, weren't you? We got grassed because I went through Alicante because Newcastle, it got stopped. Um, the suitcases got searched, this and that. And I told if I went to collect the suitcases, I'd get nicked. So I left it. So I thought I'd take a different route, which was Spain. I knew Spain quite well because I I knew a few people there. So went through Spain, but I went through Alicante Airport and then they were waiting for me with guns. Boom. That's when I got nicked. And you um, ended up having, going to prison in uh, Spain and uh, there was terrorists there and you got stabbed. And uh, then you went and stabbed them and uh, ended up making yourself like a top dog um, within uh, the prison um, service. Do you want to um, tell us that about that story? Top security wing, they put me in. They thought because of the amount of the money I was dealing with, yeah, they thought... I had like uh, land, maybe a yacht, property in Spain, top security, they put me in there. Yeah? And so I was in there for a remand for a year and a half because they were trying to search, thinking I've got money there. They wanted to take all the money off me, but I had no money in Spain. So in this meantime, top security wing is where I want, and that was a punishment wing. Well, you was technically free within that uh, prison. There was no 24-hour lock-up. No, there were no 23-hour lock-up. So basically, the prisoners could run wild and stab. Basically, you were who they want. Um, do you want to tell us about that? They're just all on it, you know? The Spanish authorities, the laws there, uh, health and safety. You can walk a joint there in the yard, and you can smoke joint, you can smoke weed in the yard. The screws just leave you alone. Outside gym, which we could use once a week. But then we all had to get searched down, patted down, this and that. And even if the screws weren't up to it, they used to say, okay, this week cancelled. You know, it was up to them, yeah? So that was just once a week. And uh, you uh, was managed to actually escape um, a prison, didn't you? Do you want to tell us um, about that? Karim, yeah. The Algerian, the ghost. He was a cocaine dealer. He had contacts all over Portugal, Algeria. And he worked in the little shop. It was at the corner, the corner of the jail, next to the big wall. And uh, he said to me, a few weeks we got talking, he went, listen, yeah, I'm going to do a nine, yeah? He went, you're going to get a nine as well, yeah? He went, listen, let's just both go, okay? And he told me the story, yeah? He's going to dig a hole, there was a refrigerator. He was digging it with a fucking spoon, yeah? And... Uh, I was like, looking at the hole and then I looked at the wall. He went, it's just this wall. Once we go through this, we just need to run down. Avoid getting shot off the screw from the top. And then once we're at the other wall, we can hop that one. And I got my car waiting. I was thinking, I said, I'll cover your ass. Yeah? I said, I'll cover your fucking ass. Yeah. Okay. I know, right. Okay. Fair enough. 
there was a German dude as well at the time. He didn't want a part of it because his brother was in as well. And he didn't want to escape without taking his br brother. So Carry Me was on his own. Anyway, he used to bang. He used to bang on this fucking, uh, bang on this wall, yeah. And my cell, directly opposite. So I used to play my music on my radio loud and purpose, yeah. So the screws, they couldn't hear. Anyway, it was banging, 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 boom, 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 boom. And then um, the day they escaped, he went, right, listen, the hole's done. He had like a fridge. What wasn't working covered the hole. It was like, um, you know, how he did it, yeah? It was so good how he did it. Anyway, he took the fucking hole. He took the fucking hole. He showed me the hole. Anyway, you want to come? I went, no. I went, no. Anyway, he was allowed to stay in the shop at the corner to do the stock take an hour after everybody else. So we were all in association at the time, yeah? We were association from six to seven o'clock. And so he says he's going to do the breakout in that time, yeah? And so he told me to stage a fight, yeah? Stage a fight so all the screws land and they're all on my bit and so he can do a run for it. I'm like, right, okay. So we staged it, yeah? Half seven, I think it was the time, yeah? Half six or half seven, one of the two. Anyway, we synchronized the watches, yeah? I mean, the German, I mean, all right. And then we started an argument over um, TV. There was a shitty little fucking TV coated in fucking metal and plastic. You couldn't even see the fucking what to watch. So I argued with him and this and that. So I threw a chair at him. Plastic chair, he threw one back. And so we just started a fight, yeah? We started a fight and then boom, the whistles rang out and then all the screws rang. Exactly on half six, half seven, I don't exactly time, yeah? Anyway, Karim, done one, boom, he was away. He was away. And at a time, then we heard some shots, bam, bam, bam. And all right, escape. And then the screws just fucking turn around. Back heel, boom, right? They're back heeled. And they were gone. Anyway, five minutes later, they come back and all right, everybody lock up, bang up. Yeah, we thought, all right. And I went, what's happened? Has he got away or what? Screws didn't say a word, yeah? We knew he got away, yeah? I was in mixed feelings at the time, yeah, thinking I should have fucking gone with him, you know? And uh, he got caught again. He got grassed up. He, he went to Portugal. He sent me a postcard. The ghost, he went, take care, chat. Nice one, brother. Blah, blah, blah. The ghost. Spain to collect a debt. Collect a, you know, a debt, grassed up, and that was 30 or grand. It's bad, isn't it? But you don't hear of it often, this, these prison escapes, do you? You even like, you hear it now and again that someone tried to escape, and like, it just makes you think of the great escape, doesn't it? You know, the, the documentary <laughs> film. Yeah. Um, you've done a lot of um, bad in your life, haven't you? Um, what makes do you want to uh, change your life around? You know, you know, I've done a lot of bad in my life. But like, I haven't hurt anybody that's mm. never had a Jew come into them, yeah? No no innocence involved in this, yeah? Everybody I've hurt, they've had a Jew, yeah? They've had a come into them. And I just feel I've done a lot of bad and I'm still here, I'm still alive. So I should help, I should help the unfortunate. So do you feel better after you've been in Poseidon? You've really reiterated yourself in a sense and you're helping people. Does that make you um, feel better for yourself? I don't feel better for it, actually, to tell the truth. I just feel I need to do it. You know, I'm in a position now to do that. I don't work. I don't have a job. And, you know, I should do that, I think. See no money, second on clothes. That's how. I, that's what I used to wear as a child. Stutter I had as a child. How did you fix the um, stutter? The stutter, the stutter I've still got now. If you know, the stutter I've still got now. But that's just confidence. I said confidence. Do you think the more confident you got, the more powerful you become? You know, back then I was just like a skinny little kid, second-hand clothes. You know, I didn't know anybody. I was only a brown face in the class, and you know, I couldn't even talk. You know, I couldn't even talk. I couldn't even say my own name, and I get a pissed at you know I me mean? people doing this, doing that, and okay, I took all this shit, man. You gotta you got take the shit. And um, thank you for talking to us, Chad.